Yes, well, I love this question because it's actually something that I thought a lot about when I was making Art Pop. I thought about the intention of the work. What did I want to accomplish with this record? And um, really what I wanted to accomplish is I wanted to define the kind of music that I've really been making from the beginning of my career, uh, but define it in a more simple way so that the fans could really understand it, like almost cracking open my brain so that uh, people could look inside of me. Uh, so. Uh, when I went through my earlier work and we talked through my music and all of my different influences, I realized that what I am is a Warhol fan, an obsessed Warhol fan that came full circle. I fell so deeply in love with pop, pop art. And then at some point, once I had looked through it all and read through it all and, and obsessed over it all, I realized that culture was now in a place for it to flip. That it had also almost come so full circle that it was um, having a rebirth. And this rebirth is now that art culture is coming into pop culture, as opposed to Marilyn being the subject of the canvas. Marilyn herself is now the canvas. So this is what art pop is all about. It's about making the artist, uh, the muse, and the musician, and the canvas, and the work itself. Yes, I'm, of course. I listen to all different kinds of music, and I love J-pop, and I love the, the freedom of the, of the music. The energy in J-pop is really powerful. And I'm always inspired by uh, Japanese culture when working. And I was very inspired by Japanese culture while I, while I was making the album. I would say Japanese culture mixed with um, uh, German uh, underground art culture and uh, uh, French um, dance music and uh, Chicago. Uh, techno and hip-hop, uh, these were the things I was thinking about. I watched a lot of uh, like 70s performance art films that were so, so inspiring. And I also looked at a lot of uh, fine art that I love. Um, Jeff Koontz, the amazing uh, sculptor, he's one of, if not the greatest fine living artists of our time and um, uh, uh, Marina Abramovich, my friend and mentor, and she's so incredible. And she, uh, looking into her work, I became obsessed with freedom and how, I, how could I free myself with this album? How could I make music that took me outside of the box of being what people think is expected of a pop singer? And how can I push the boundaries and how can the music set me free of all that? Uh, so, uh, and then also uh, Robert Wilson, who designed my stage for the VMAs, and we worked on that performance with him. He is a, a legend in the theatrical sphere. So these are the, the sorts of things I was looking at while I was writing the music. But the music is intended to be fun, a good time. I just want people to listen to the music and have a good time. Well, I never choose my singles, so I didn't actually choose it. But uh, I thought it was a great choice as a lead single because the album is very eclectic and it goes on a journey. So it was more about what was the first statement that we wanted to make. And I liked the statement that it made because it brings back some very old sentiments about show business that I feel are very, very absent right now. Um, this idea that the performer lives for the applause as opposed to living for the fame separate from the stage. I don't care about that kind of fame, uh, just having people's attention all the time. What I crave is performing live and making a connection with my fans and hearing them cheer because they're happy. Well, it's completely different. I definitely evolve as much as I want to, I suppose, between each album. 
uh, and the fame, going into the fame monster, there was a definite um, shift in, I think, the maturity of, of, the, of the dance uh, elements in the music were more mature. They were also much darker and had more of a melancholy undertone, and I think that really brought out the aesthetic of monsters. Um, and then we got to Born This Way, which for me was a decision that I made to, to create a record that encapsulated me at 19, living in New York City, listening to metal and techno and glam rock, and writing an album that risked it all for a message about human rights and equality that I care deeply about. It was something that I really needed to do as a as a person I guess after all that success I didn't imagine that I would have an overwhelming feeling to give back and even if that album just just touched one person uh, it was worth it to me to risk it all and then you go to art pop and I want to celebrate the victory of born this way the victory for me of the fans lives that it did touch in a very deep way in an intimate way so I made them a record to dance to. I made them a record to wipe their tears from Born This Way and throw confetti and kiss one another and and applaud one another. In an age where a lot of people are cynical and want to tear each other down, I want my fans to cheer each other on. That's what Art Pop is about. Now let Now let's go into the future. We've left the drift. The principal message, I want them to feel that their creativity is an important part of them, no matter who they are. I want them to feel that they don't need to prove anything in order to be artistic or to be creative. I want them to feel a sense of ownership over their talents and cherish those things about themselves and know that that part of them is what is going to be dictating pop culture in the future. You are the future of what we will see because commercialism now is so big it's trash. It's everywhere. It's like fast food uh, because Warhol put the fast food on the canvas. But now it's time for the canvas to, to be more important than the fast food. And I want them to take that message with them. I want them to remember that being themselves and making what they love is more important than anything, more important than proving yourself, more important than validation from other people about your success. Your success belongs to you. Well, the concept behind the video for applause uh, that we did with Inez and Venud, who are incredible, incredible photographers, and they have done some amazing film work as well, so we did this together. And the whole concept of the video is I am this sort of classic figure, um, all in black. I didn't really want to wear any wigs. I don't know why it felt uh, like it was defining me in a certain particular way that I didn't want to be defined anymore. So it's, it's me as a performer sort of performing desperately to be classic and to be simple to be minimal in that moment. I'm begging for, for simplicity. And then as that's happening, uh, a series of all my, my inspirations and a series of um, all the sort of movements in my career so far, uh, they are doing magic tricks around me and they're sort of lo-fi and the, the whole concept is that we would be do, willing to do anything for applause to make you happy, to entertain you. And then by the end, I'm walking down the runway in this archive Galliano, and I'm crying, holding my, my, my broken limb with a bouquet of flowers um, falling out of the hip. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm saying, I miss you, I miss you. I wish I could be with you. Uh, I live for this moment. Thank you for still being here. So, and that would be the message I would leave with my Japanese fans, too. I would. I would love to just say thank you for still being here. Aishtemas. There will be. There will be eventually, you'll see. 
Yes, I had. I just really realized for the first time that, um, you know, I knew the feeling was always inside of me that I felt conflicted about fame. But when I had to stop completely, I realized that I, I didn't have any desires to go out and be seen without having a show or a song or an album out. I still dressed up, but in my house and in private, not for others, but for me. And I felt that um, I was able to sort of once and for all in my heart be confident in my intentions and what I'm, I'm doing. And my intention is that I have an insatiable need to please people. And I have an insatiable need to make you happy through, through music. And that that's what I live for, not for the cameras and for the attention. I live for hearing my Japanese fans scream uh, because they're just happy to see me. Well, I have been dancing, and that's been my favorite because <laughs> all my muscles are waking up, and um, they really woke up this week. It was felt really weird, <laughs> but it was it was. I, I was saying the other day, I feel like Frankenstein. I feel like a, I feel like a Japanese monster that's waking, waking up, uh, and it's a wonderful feeling. I feel stronger than ever in a way because I have nothing to lose. You know, I mean, when 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 that happened, I didn't even know if I'd ever perform again. I didn't, didn't know if I would ever be able to dance again the way I was dancing before, and I, I just I'm so happy that everything's okay that I can just be there for my fans again. Oh, I mean, I'm sure everybody thinks that I would say Harajuku, but I would say like all of Japan is art pop. And the reason is because, because I always feel that Japan is ac actually more ahead with t technology all the time. Uh, there's something that's occurring where people are communicating with imagery. And in Japan, you communicate with imagery everywhere, um, on street signs, outside, much more than in America. The sense of visual uh, stimulation and marketing is on a totally other level in Japan, especially in Tokyo. Uh, so I would say that... Um, I would say Japanese communication is art pop. That's what I would say. <laughs>